Mayu's previous handhelds have all been released under the BitBoy, Pocket Go, and occasionally Wolson brand in the West. This time though, for a reason that's not entirely clear, but which does inspire some confidence, they've applied the Mayu brand to the product. Perhaps to distance themselves from some of their previous products, who knows? The Mayu Mini is a very small, budget-friendly handheld with a 2.8 LCD dominating the top half of the device. It is not micro in size, but it's about as small as practically possible without sacrificing too much in the way of usability. It's about 107G with the battery, and the battery itself weighs 32G. Obviously analog sticks have had to go, but there is a very nice L2 slash or 2 implementation on the back of the unit. The Mayu Mini comes boxed up nicely in rigid cardboard box. There's a landfill card reader, USB-C cable, and instruction booklet in there too. It immediately feels like a quality product. The plastic molding and general fit and finish are extremely good. The plastic texture is very fine matte, and the shell itself completely rejects any fingerprints. It seems that Mayu are quickly rising up to an burnic level of craftsmanship. The Pocket Go S30 was also a nicely made device, with some caveats, and the Mayu Mini is a far cry from the cheap-feeling BitBoy from a few years ago. If you remember back to Enbrenic's first devices such as the RS97 and RG300, the build quality of their subsequent handhelds was much better. It feels like Mayu are on a similar trajectory here. The Mayu Mini is advertised as having an IPS display, but it's immediately obvious that if it is IPS it's not quite as good as some rivals. The viewing angles, whilst fairly wide, quickly wash out unless you're looking at it dead on. Colors don't quite pop either, it seems like the contrast has been dialed down a bit. Word is that it's the same panel as the BlackBerry 9900, so it is at least 10 years old. Let's not be too hard on it though. The reality is that we have a 2.8640 by 480 bezel less LCD in this device, and whilst it's not mind-blowing, it's perfectly acceptable. It's not OCA laminated, but the LCD sits extremely close to the lens. And crucially, there is no noticeable ghosting or screen tearing. The color temperature is good too, with no obvious weight towards either red, green, or blue. The colors look very natural to my eyes, if lacking some vibrancy overall. I can't figure out if the screen lens is plastic or glass, but there is zero flex to it. I'm fairly sure it's glass. My biggest worry with this device was the buttons. Some previous Mayu handhelds have had unacceptably poor conductive membranes which fail to register inputs some of the time. The Mayu Mini comes with a built-in input checker, and I am pleased to report that all of the buttons on my unit register 100% of the time at any pressure level. Not only that, but the pad is nothing short of amazing. It never registers a false diagonal, and it's very similar to Enbrenic's RG280V implementation, albeit with a slightly lower pivot. Unlike the RG280V, it has more rounded edges which overall makes the Mayu Mini pad even better in my opinion. Start and select buttons are made of hard plastic, rather than the rubber finish you might expect from their Game Boy aesthetic. ABXY are perfect, pushing down with a noticeable but soft click. Round the back, the R2 slash L2 triggers sit slightly proud of our slash L, making it easy to find them without looking. For adult hands it is much easier to hit R2 slash L2 than R slash L, compared to the RG280V, the Mayo Mini is a more comfortable device to play overall, however hitting L slash R is more difficult for me. As previously mentioned, the Mayo Mini contains a SOC not seen before in a handheld device. It's a Sigma Star SSD 202D, which is a Cortex A7 dual core chip running at 1.2 GHz, paired with just 128 megabytes of DDR3 RAM and no GPU for 3D acceleration. It is no powerhouse. It's probably a bit more powerful than the JZ4770, and some of the included emulators offer similar performance. 
Having said that, the SSD202D is built on a 22 or 28 nanometers process, compared to the 65 nanometers of the JZ4770. This should mean better efficiency and potentially a longer battery life. There is ongoing work to bring mainline Linux support to these chips. Whilst I could pretend to understand what's required for this to happen, I don't. As far as I understand, the biggest hurdle is lack of kernel sources, and a significant reverse engineering effort is ongoing due to that. The Mayo Mini has its firmware stored on a NAND chip soldered to the motherboard. Emulators, ROMs, applications, images, RetroArch cores, etc. are all stored on a removable microSD card and are writable via a PC. Unfortunately for us, the USB port on the device is for charging only. There are no data lines connected, so it is not possible to view, read, or write to the NAND via a PC. Developer Shaninman has ported a version of Commander to the device which allows you to look at the contents of the NAND. Be careful if you're poking around in there. It's not yet known if all of the NAND contents are protected slash read only. There is a chance that if you remove or edit the wrong file you could brick your device. There are UART solder points on the side of the motherboard which may provide a way to recover from a bodged upgrade or corrupted NAND in future. It's very unfortunate that Mayu didn't connect any data lines to the USB port. From what I understand this would have made the process of updating and tinkering much easier. Presumably it would be much safer too. The Mayu Mini is powered by a 1900 mAh replaceable battery of which replacements are plentiful. Battery life is between 5 and 6 hours which is excellent for a device of its size. The battery actually adds a substantial amount to the overall weight of the device. The mono speaker is loud but shrill and the volume is controlled by an analog wheel on the left side. The speaker does emit an almost inaudible pink noise hiss when on full volume. If you use the settings to dim the screen there is also a whining noise from the speaker. This doesn't appear to be affected by volume level, it's just there. With brightness on full and the volume at a reasonable level, I cannot hear any hiss or whine unless I put my ear to the speaker. I am confident that performance of this handheld will improve when custom firmware is released. It should be said though that in some cases, it's not as good as the JZ4770 yet, despite having a similarly powerful SoC. Overall, the RetroArch cores perform better than those from the standard game menu. If you can look past the inability to change RetroArch settings right now, you will probably have a better experience here. This isn't always the case. Difficult to emulate titles such as Bloody Roar 2 for the PS1 seem to run well in the stock PCSX rearmed emulator with frame skip set to auto. Better than in the RetroArch core. However, it's possible that better performance could be squeezed out of RetroArch with the ability to save configuration changes. You can expect slight audio lag and crackle in most games, but I am less troubled by that than I am the incorrect scaling and AR. Mayo have excelled in the hardware department for this handheld, with one major oversight. They've set out to create a capable low-budget device with a previously unused SoC and have succeeded. For $52 you are getting a highly pocketable, fairly comfortable mini handheld with a good high residential panel. The controls are well thought out with a clever shoulder button implementation and excellent pad. The overall build quality is superb, Mayu have just about reached and burnic levels of manufacture with this device. It is a shame that the underlying Linux OS is closed source, but the work of the community by way of MiniUI and Onion OS allow for a well-polished and fully featured experience nevertheless. For enthusiasts and tinkerers, the stock software lets it down right now. The reason Anburnic software is so polished is because they do eventually release their source code for each device and the community developers can work with it to create an excellent OS. Mayu have released two new colors of the Mayu Mini. A smoky transparent black and a transparent blue version are now available, but stock still appears to be quite erratic even now.